What does the overnight sensations have that most speakers don't have? Is the driver the tweeter offset on that one? The, oh, the yeah. The, offset the, tweeter. <laughs> offset tweeter. But uh, other ones, we look at it and, and it's centered. And, and, you know, we look at that and we say, well, why would one be offset? Why would one be centered? What should I choose? Does it matter? Is it just an aesthetic choice? Is there a difference in, in sound quality? And some of this does come to aesthetics, but there is actually reasons why you would offset a tweeter. I would personally only do it i don't do it very often and I, i'll go full nerd on you guys i'm sure but I'll, I'll i'll try to spare it but i only do it if the top and side uh distances from the center of the tweeter are the same you're saying and and that's something i wanted to get into like you're saying if you put a a tweeter centered on the baffle and the tweeter offset was going to be the same equidistant right and left as well as top mm -hmm. then you would offset then the i tweeter. would do it I try to avoid having the same distance for the, for the purposes we'll talk about, which is diffraction. Yeah. But generally, if, if say, um, if say the distance to the top is two inches and the distance to the uh, side is three inches, then I would keep the tweeter centered. What is diffraction, right? Yeah. So basically the edge of the baffle, assuming a sharp edge, but even a curved or rounded edge will have this problem. But, take a basic baffle that's very sharp edged you know it's flat and then you got the side of the speaker and the top as well typical rectangle yeah so wavelengths time and distance are all interrelated and basically the distance from the tweeter into very very small woofers but maybe not uh the distance from the tweeter to the edge of the baffle is it corresponds to a wavelength or a frequency okay so if that distance is four inches or six inches or whatever, that'll correspond to a different frequency. So that distance corresponds to a frequency. And what happens is when the, when the sound wave propagates towards you or the microphone and also to the sides, it hits that edge and wants to wrap around the speaker. And for a long enough wavelength, it will wrap around the speaker. But for, and for a short enough wavelength, it'll just propagate forward. But at the right wavelength, it'll actually break up right at that uh, that wavelength, and it'll come back to you or the microphone out of phase with the on-axis sound, and that out of phase um, diffraction sound will create dips and peaks and things like that in your frequency response that we don't want. And, so and the angle at which that happens is—I'm sorry—the measurement at which that happens is from the center of the tweeter to whatever edge we're measuring. Yeah, we're just taking a me you can frequency. Take, you can literally, with some basic math, you can take the distance, the speed of sound, and work out exactly which frequency that would come up at, and then measure it and prove it. It's very simple to prove. And uh, so when we're talking about, like, oh, offsetting the tweeter this way or that way, we're constantly going back to that basic element, which is the distance from the tweeter to the edge of the baffle and where diffraction happens. So the reason why we're talking about this, and this is very interesting, every time there is the same distance from the center of the tweeter, then we get diffraction at the same spot in the graph. When you offset a tweeter, the, the biggest reason why you're doing that is to cut down on diffraction. But if you're going to offset a tweeter, you need to understand why you're doing it. Because I've seen too many people offset the tweeter and they've put the same distance from the top and to the side as yeah. the same distance because it looks good, but it gets rid of any of the reasoning behind why you would offset a tweeter as far as sound performance. In my example of the two and the three, if you moved it over to two from the left, sorry, I'm mirrored in the video, <laughs> then you would, you would actually just be making it worse in my opinion, because I'd rather horizontally, we're going to move around. So you're actually naturally offsetting the distance between the baffle edges and the tweeter all the time, horizontally, not so much vertically. So let's clarify, like when you have the tweeter directly centered, and this is the reason why most people center their tweeter. When you have it directly centered, you have a mirror image of your off axis response. Yeah. Yeah. So if you go to the right hand side, 45 degrees off axis, and then go to your left hand side, 45 degrees off axis, it's a mirror image. However, with an offset tweeter, when you offset it, now when you go towards the tweeter side, you have a different response as when you go away from the tweeter side. So for me, if I'm going to offset a tweeter, I'm 
only going to offset a tweeter typically on near field monitors. I don't necessarily like the idea of offsetting tweeters on far field speakers for me personally. That's a personal decision. Yeah, no, I, I think there's there's some merit to that as well, like technical merit. Yeah. I recently did this on a, a set of uh, studio monitors that I built, which are intended to be like midfield, near field monitors, um, and they were offset. And you can most certainly see the diffraction effects within the response as you check. Because when we measure the, typically when we look at off axis response of like a commercially available speaker, we're only looking at it in one direction in theory, right? We're just taking a single measurement. But if we've got an offset tweeter, we really need to take it in both directions. 180 degrees around. And the reason why we'd offset the tweeter is so that would diffract at four different frequencies, one at the bottom, one at the top, one at the right, and one at the left. And we'd spread those frequencies out. It's kind of funny because I, I reviewed a pair of speakers. Well, I actually didn't review them because they were so bad, but I got a pair of speakers in for review. And it was funny because they had the offset tweeter, but it was the same distance from the top and to the side. See, when we have a centered tweeter, the diffraction that we're trying to get rid of is the same equidistance from side to side, right? That's the same distance span. So when we offset it, if we offset it and we still have the same distance from the top to the bottom and the, you know, the side to the end, the side, then we really haven't, like, we've just moved the point of where the diffraction is occurring. The reason we move the tweeter is because if we've got the same distance, it's going to come back or cancel out at the same frequency by offsetting it. We're changing that point in time where it's going or that wavelength distance uh, where it's going to affect our frequency response so that we don't get all of that cancellation in the exact same region and it have as big of an impact on our well, final Well, sound. think of it like this. If you have one crazy kid in your house, that's bad. <laughs> but if you have two crazy kids yes. in your house, it's like, oh, it's worse, right? So if you have the same distance at which it's diffracting, mm -hmm. it makes those out of phase errors worse. So the worst thing that you could do is build a cube or something of that nature yeah. where the tweeter's right in the center and then it will diffract it the same like everywhere or a circle a circle would be the absolute worst oh yeah you're right a, a, yeah. a circle with with the tweeter directly in the center yes cuz all the dis the distance would be the same all the way around so yeah. it's like now, your example mention we said circle not globe yeah a globe is good cuz it's smooth yeah. so you don't get as much diffraction but yeah you're right it's like do you want a crazy kid in your house all day long uh, for part of the day or for some of the day, right? Like you're, <laughs> yeah. you're just trying to move that tweeter around. So it, yeah, doesn't do as much all at once. So when you, when you do offset the tweeter, you need to actually use math to offset it, to make sure that uh, you're not doing even a multiple of two is, is bad. Yeah. You wouldn't want it like six inches and 12 inches because they're multiples right. of each other. And exactly. Sticky Boots actually mentioned the golden ratio and that's, that's, it's the golden ratio. That's kind of what you're shooting for, which is 1.33, I think. And if you can do that on all, you know, making the sides all different distances, you can get better diffraction. All, However, there are other ways to deal with diffraction that are probably better in my opinion, unless you're building near field monitors, because near field monitors, we don't have to worry as much about those off axis responses as we do with far field.